Could I set off five o'clock in the morning, 15th of March, and go faster than I had in a race? This is what I wanted to find out. So it's a solo attempt at the KOM, which I'd got a couple of years previously in a race. And I wanted to see if I could push myself just as much without competition and in beautiful surroundings, which you can see there. So, so few times, like when I actually relax and just chill out, that when you come in towards an attempt or a race, whatever, like this, it's a time for me to relax, but also reflect and think about whether I'm on the right path, whether I'm doing the right thing. And I think I am. I think I'm doing what I love. Um, and of course, you know, I'm excited to get going tomorrow. So early morning, we set off in order to get just a couple of kilometers from here to the school where the race started. And I wanted to exactly replicate the Strava GPX that I'd ran. And we started off in the dark, it was very, very busy for the first 5K. And then we went onto this road, much quieter. You can really get into the zone, a little bit windy, but nothing to worry about, nothing that's gonna hold you back. It's still hot. So I quickly got my shirt off there, but it's not, it's, it's a nice temperature compared to what I'd been training in, in uh, Chiang Mai. Making a joke that it's, I forgot how steep it was because it starts very, very, very steep and parts of it is going through the national park entrance there. So the lads have needed to go ahead and just let them know that I'm coming through and pay for me. Tourists pay and, and ties are much less or, or for free, I think. And then we're going through the dark and a lot of this is not lit up, so got Kevin there on the, on the bike. He's got the drinks and hopefully enough petrol for the 50K. And it's gradually getting lighter. And as you can see there, it's burning season. And what I mean by burning season is the whole of Southeast Asia burns their crops February, March time up to April, May until the rains come. And it can play around with your training to say the least and it's um, it's a really bad place for it Chiang Mai because it sits in a, a valley but I'm, I was hoping really with this that we would get high enough the, ma uh, the mountain and away from the smoke um, in order to, to really go at it and you know sun comes up really quickly and it starts to sort of beat down the, 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 the heat and you can see the gradients there by the motorbike behind me. And these videos just remind me so much how, how much fun it was, but also how beautiful it is around. You're surrounded by green. Uh, it's very quiet and peaceful up there on the mountain. Um, it's Monday, we did it on Monday purposely so there wouldn't be the weekend traffic. Cheers, thanks a lot. Can you feed, uh, Joe? Eat ready? Okay, sir, I eat. Okay. And, and if you remember, I'm working really hard on my nutrition now. So I have that dialed in at 80 grams of carbohydrate per hour. And I'm working a lot more to lactate threshold and the zones uh, that I need to be in and that I can hold for the three hours, 45 minutes that we're going for. And the record is three hours, 55. So that would take 10 minutes off. And that's up there. If you can ever get to this part of the world, Northern Thailand, Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai is also very beautiful, but in the distance there will be the Myanmar um, border. And I, I always seem to forget just how steep it is. And after sort of 30, 35K, 
just gets gradually steeper and steeper and steeper. And, you know, some of that, the very, 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 very small steps. And you feel as if it's never going to end. You know, you can imagine sort of a 1.7 kilometer segment that's above 15%. You really have to work hard for a good eight, nine, 10 minutes. And it zaps the legs. The cars are close, but everybody's very respectful in Thailand, uh, especially of runners and cyclists. I'm digging in here, so it's well into sort of the third hour. And I'm struggling a bit. Small steps, steep gradient. And if it flattens off like that, you know, I'm really happy for it. 55 minutes to go. And I'm still on target at this time. I remember thinking to myself, you know, if, if there was guys in front of me, like the, the exactly the same guys that were in front of me a couple of years before, would I be able to catch up? Would I be able to put the extra effort in needed in order to make the time in order to win the race? I kind of toyed with that for quite a while in this third and fourth hour. Bali is awesome. Not too much. What does that mean? <laughs> but uh, he's videoing. He's on the bike. He's helping me out with drinks. Same with Kevin. And there's also a guy on the drone. And we were able to do this because uh, Nike saw that, you know, during COVID, there was not a lot that we, we could work with. And, and so we were able to film this, which was, you know, brilliant experience and for the lads as well. You can imagine, you know, a couple of uh, photographers, videographers, Water, water. able to yeah. work with Nike and this is the first time that I walk and I'm just desperate for water very thirsty get the gel down try to salvage something it's not a problem starting walking it's not like you're gonna just seize up and that's gonna be the end of the day if you're used to it and you are used to going far it's part of the game but this was the beginning of the end There's Kevin, and they really want the best for me, you know, that day. And you don't want to let the lads down either. Uh, but to do this without a pack, a camelback, and, and stopping along the way, you need support. And especially, obviously, to, to document it in some way. Just baby steps, trying to get through it. And it's so nice when you go through those crowded trees and it's overhung and you get some shadow. You can see how steep it is there. And I've been sweating at this point for three and a half, three hours, 40. Coming towards the summit here. So spirals round and then there's a sort of false flat for three, four kilometers. You can see the steeple there. I'm walking again, I'm struggling and it's not the right place to be walking because very, very difficult to start up again on that steep gradient. Not like it is cycling, but again, baby steps. I'm just thinking 20 more minutes, 20 more minutes. And then when you know that the, the, the target time is slipping away from you, then it's tough because you're going for that plan B. You're going for that second prize that you, you hadn't even, that hadn't even entered your head because why should it or why would it, you know? And at this point, probably I just want to get the job done. Coming to the finish line. And 
not this song and dance that there was at the end of the finish line in the race, but we just hit the military base, which is on the peak. to go I knew it was close yeah and then you just like what can you do I put my shirt off crazy crazy like and then half I my legs were like jelly so yeah. I started to walk and then I was like oh no this is bad this is uh what it's tough I don't, I don't know whether it's this huge. I don't know whether it was because it, it didn't feel hot until re very recently. It felt like uh, felt really nice temperature. I don't know whether it's the humidity. Yeah. My lord, So what was the result? I failed, and I failed not just to hit the three hours forty-five that I was aiming for, but to hit the previous KOM that I have at three hours 55. And when you start walking and you can't continue running and you know, you've know you not paced it right or you've misjudged it or whatever, then it's probably not gonna be a favorable result. And, and that's good because if it always went to plan and you always got the result that you were looking for, this sport would get very boring very quickly. And you can, Think of all the excuses, the humidity, and the heat was fine for me based on my, you know, compared to my training, which was always a little bit later on in the day and not five o'clock in the morning, but it's more humid in the morning and probably the air pollution had an effect, but that's not the point. In a time, 2020, 2021, when people were complaining that what's the point in training if there's no races or they're all postponed or canceled, we were doing stuff like this, like an indoor treadmill hill world record in a hotel in Bangkok on Boxing Day because that's the personal pursuit of trying to give your very best because you're watching. You don't need anybody else to watch. And the fact that you know you've gone out there and given your best, whether that's in training or it's in a session or it's in a race, that's what really counts. It's not the extrinsic reward of uh, a special medal or the time that you've always been dreaming. All that stuff is good and fine. But if that governs you and steers you in that direction, when it comes to something that derails you a little bit, whether that's in a single race or in a time like the pandemic, it wrecks you. And people who are intrinsically motivated and just do it because they love it, they're gonna get ahead. 